All right, folks. This is episode two of Meet Jesus. We're going to jump right into it. We're going to go to the book of John. We're going to start at chapter two. And we're going to start reading. And let's get to it. All right. So for chapter two, this is... uh, Jesus's third day of ministry, he is, him and his disciples are invited to a wedding. Uh, At that wedding, they run out of wine. Uh, His mother Mary comes to him, to Jesus, to let him know that they ran out of wine. Uh, And we'll see what happens, you know, what what happens there. So I'm going to jump right into it. I'm going to start reading and give you a little bit of an explanation. On the third day, there was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. That's Mary. Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. When the wine ran out, the mother of Jesus said to him, We have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. So right here, Jesus is addressing his mother as woman. So woman was is first of all no disrespect. Um it's in like an informal term of addressing, you know, his mother. But at the same time, you got to realize that Mary birthed Jesus's physical body, but Jesus is God. So, in a way, Mary really did not birth God. So, really, Jesus is Mary's father. But Mary birthed Jesus' physical body. So, the flesh Mary gave birth to, but the spirit is God. So, that is not Jesus' mother. It's just they God had to use Mary to get the physical body, you know, into this physical world. So that is why he is addressing her as woman. So he he says, what does this have to do with me? So this is him saying that, he says, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not come. So he's like letting her know that, you know, this might not be my time yet. That, you know, you're coming to me with this, but this is not what I was planning on doing or, you know, planning on starting these miracles at this moment. So what happens after that? Let's see. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Let me see how I can get back here. So now... There were six stone water jars there for the Jewish rites of purification, which the Jewish rites of purification was they would wash their hands before and after meals uh, during their celebratory meals. Um, So there are six jars. Each of them were holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, this is Jesus speaking now, fill the jars with water. So the servants are like, Yo, Mary said to do, you know, whatever he says. So I guess we'll fill these up with water. And now Jesus says, now draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. So the servants grab some water out, throw it in a cup, bring it to the master of, you know, the head the head of this feast, the one who threw this whole thing. <clears throat> so... When the master of the feast tasted the water, now become wine. So this water has now become wine and did not know where it came from. Although the servants knew, you know, where it came from because they're the ones who brought the water to him. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, which is basically the husband. So the master of the feast calls the husband and he's like, yo, come here. And he says to the husband, he's like, Dude, he goes, everyone serves the good wine first. And then once people have drunk freely, then they bring the poor wine out. So usually the best wine you drink first and your palate sort of becomes dull. 
to the flavors. So if the wine is not as good, you don't really notice it as much. But now he's saying, but you have kept the good wine until now. So Jesus has this water that he turned to wine, which blows away the best wine, you know, that they bought for this wedding. So this is the first of Jesus' signs uh, in Cana Galilee, and this manifested his glory, and his disciples believed him. And you'll see this a lot where it says his disciples believed him. So he Jesus is here in flesh. He is performing miracles, and it's still tough for his followers, his disciples, to get the concept. So nowadays, it's tough it's tough for people, believers and non-believers, to get the concept of Jesus because it's so big that we're just physical. We we can only see the physical. We can only comprehend the physical. So to comprehend something like Jesus is tough to do, but that's not what we need to do. We just need to believe he has been here. History was split from because of Jesus from B.C. to A.D., Every time you sign a check, you're acknowledging when you sign that date, you write that date down on a paper, you know, on your school paper, you put the date, you're acknowledging that Jesus Christ was here. And yeah. So after this, he went down to Capernaum with his mother and his brothers and his disciples, and they stayed there for a few days. So with his mother, Mary and his brothers. So he has brothers as well. <clears throat> now we're coming up to the Passover. So the Passover is a Jewish, uh, like a Jewish ceremony. They all go to Jerusalem to the temple and, you know, basically worship and, you know, do everything that they do. So the Passover of the Jews was at hand. That means it was here. And Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found those who were selling oxen, sheep, doves. Well, on here it says pigeons, but pigeons as well. And the money changers sitting there. So he sees all these people. He sees money changers in there. So making a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and oxen. So he drove everybody out of the temple along with the sheep and oxen. He poured out the coins of the money changers and turned over the tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, take these things away from here. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. Basically, don't turn my father's house into a market. This is a place where people come to worship and you're turning it into a market. You're going to deter people from even wanting to come here to worship the father to save themselves. So, Everybody thinks of Jesus, you know, all he's loving, all loving, you know. Right here, man, Jesus made a whip from cords. He's cracking that whip. He's getting people out of here, oxen, sheep. You know, he's telling these people, get these things away from here. Do not make my father's house into a market. You know, he's stern. He's not playing. So Jesus wasn't, you know, the soft dude. You know, he was, he wasn't playing. He's serious about everything. Is Jesus full of love? Yes. You know, he's full of love, mercy, grace. He's the truth. So his disciples remembered that it was written, and this was from Psalms, zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us for doing these things? So Jews are asking him, like, what gives you the right to, to do all this stuff? You're, you're driving animals out of here you're flipping tables what gives you the right to do this stuff so jesus tells them destroy this temple and in three days i will raise it so jews are like destroy this temple it took like 46 years to build this temple and you're going to raise it in three days well jesus is talking about his body his body is the temple so which they are going to destroy it later on as we will see there he's going to die on the cross for us because that's the whole reason he came here. So he's going to go to the cross, die, and in three days he's going to resurrect. Full fleshy body is going to resurrect. So he, down here it says, Therefore, 
when he is raised from the dead, so when he does die and he is raised from the dead, his disciples remember that. Well, actually, it says in present tense, he, his, his disciples remembered that he said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. So it's interesting here how he hasn't died yet and on the cross. And right here, it's saying that his disciples remembered that he said this. So when he died, his disciples remembered that he said this about destroying the temple and it'll raise in three days. And as you see again, and they believe the scripture and the word Jesus has spoken. So again, they're no, now they believe again. They're with this guy. They're seeing these miracles and they're still not getting it. These guys are like they're fishermen, tax collectors, or, you know, back then a lot of these tax collectors are crooked dudes. Um, but they're just like simple. They're like us. They're all screw ups. They're, you know, all sinners. And even them being with Jesus are having trouble believing him, like realizing what is going on. And this is the thing, like when people are like, God, if you would just show me a sign, God has shown you so many signs. But the problem is that most of the time when we see the signs, we go, oh, man, what a coincidence. How about no, man? How about that was God helping you out there and you're still not getting it. You're still not believing when he's right there with you. Oh, what a coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence. All right. So now after that, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover feast, so this is later on that evening for the Passover feast. Many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus, on his part, did not entrust himself to them because he knew all people. He needed no one to bear witness about man for himself, for he himself knew what was in man. So he knows, like, he doesn't, he's not entrusting himself to these Jews, to any of these people, because he knows who they are, what they are, and how they are. He knows that we're, we're not good people, but he still loves us. That's, that's the crazy thing about it. He's still going to save our butts. All right. So that was chapter two. That was a quick chapter. You know, that was the, you know, nice little quick chapter. So now we're going to go into chapter three. Now this is going to be where he's going to come across a Pharisee named Nicodemus, who is like the top dog, one of the top dog Pharisees, you know, the top G. He's the man. So Nicodemus is going to talk to Jesus and he's going to let Jesus know, like, yo, I know that God sent you, you know. Um, and Jesus is going to let him know, like, all right, well, that's cool. That's cool, fam. But anytime you're ever going to come to kingdom of heaven, dude, you're going to have to be reborn. And this is where Nicodemus start questioning him, going, hey, bro, that sounds like cap. Like, what you mean, reborn? How am I supposed to crawl back into my mom again? So here we go. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, so teacher, we know you are a teacher. We know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you look here, unless, key word right there, unless the person is born again, he absolutely cannot see the kingdom of God. He has to be born again. It's the only way. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Like, Yo, fam, what up? Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, 
unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So this is like what we talked about in chapter one of being baptized. So unless one is born of the water and the spirit. So in water, this is when you get baptized, you're going to go down underwater and you're going to rise up. So that's your grave. You're, you're dying to your old self and you're going to rise up with your new self. And this is going to be, you're, you're going to start, this is your Holy Spirit. So you're going to get the Holy Spirit. It's going to be a new you. And this is where you're going to work hard. You're going to follow Christ. You're going to stop doing what you have been doing. Everything worldly, you're going to quit doing. Now you're going to screw up. Jesus already knows that. And that's why he came here. Because he died for your screw ups that you have done, that you are doing, and that you're going to continue to do. But it's the thing about it is that your heart's going to change to where you're going to screw up and you're going to feel it's wrong now. You're going to know it's wrong. You're going to repent for it. Like, fam, I'm sorry I did this. Bruh, I should not have done that. I am so, so sorry. And basically, you know, it's your conv conviction to yourself. Like, you're, you're, you know, you are sorry for what you did. And you are not going to do that again. Are you going to work your best? I'm not doing it again. As opposed to somebody who, say, sleeps with anybody they want. And, you know, they brag. Yeah, hey, brother, I just, you know, got another notch on the belt last night. You know, went to the club. Yeah, I met this fine one. Yeah. Now I'm going tonight. You know, I met this other one. You know, that's, there's no conviction there. There's no repentance there. There's no nothing there. That's not, you're not following Christ. You have no Holy Spirit. So that's the difference. <clears throat> let's see where i'm at all right i'm on uh three verse six that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit so that who's born of the flesh is flesh so our first birth when we come out of our mother's wombs we are born of the flesh and we're usually everything's worldly we want material we want money you know we want girls we want boys we want you know, all this stuff that is flesh, that is worldly, that, that is born of the flesh. Now, when you're that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So once you're baptized and you're born, you knew you, the Holy Spirit. That's when your mind changes. That's when you're not worried about this worldly possession crap. You know, you're going, man, I need that new truck. I want that thing jacked up. I want the, you know, 24s, American forces. No, nah, you don't even care about that stuff. Just give me a vehicle so I get to A and B. You know, I want to read my Bible. I want to help bring other people to Christ. That's your Holy Spirit. I'm going to stay steadfast in Christ. I'm going to stay focused on him. I'm going to pray, meditate on him. And that's born of the Spirit. So that's two different things right there. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So the wind blows where it wishes, you hear it sound, but you don't know where it comes from. So this is how it is with people who are born of the Spirit. So people born of the Spirit, you see them change. You see they're not living worldly anymore. You can tell somebody who's fo truly following Christ. You know, they love everybody, no matter how good or bad they are. You know, the other person is. They'll love that person. That, But you, you have no idea how it happens. You don't know. That's what he's telling you. This wind, you don't know that where it's coming from. You don't know where it's going. You have no idea how it happens. But you hear it. You know it's there. You can feel the wind. You know the wind's there. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered, Bruh, are you the teacher of Israel, yet you do not understand these things? And the reason why Jesus is asking him this stuff is because this is supposed to be a holy spiritual dude. And Nicodemus is not getting it. He's he's worldly still. He's still in the flesh, 
not understanding the spiritual stuff that Jesus is telling him about, about being born. How can it be somebody be born of the spirit? So Nicodemus is still not comprehending what Jesus is telling him. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. So we're, we're telling you everything we know. We're telling you, you know, we have witnesses of everything that's been seen, but still you're not, you're not receiving the testimony. You're still not really getting it. You're not believing it. You're not, you don't have faith in it. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So I'm telling you these little earthly things, being baptized and coming up, and you're not believing. So how can I go beyond that, tell you anything beyond that? You, you can't even comprehend these little being baptized and stuff like that. You, you know, you're, you're lost. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven the son of man so right here 13 no one absolutely no one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven so jesus came down from heaven into mary's womb so so he's been in heaven and he descended from heaven he is the Son of Man. He is the only one. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man be lifted up, and whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So Moses lifted up his staff, and it turned into a serpent. And this is what Jesus is saying, is that Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So that's how, now he's saying that Jesus has to be lifted up. So when Jesus has died and crucified, he has to resurrect. He has to. Whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So that's the reason why he has to lift up and be resurrected, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. So once they see that he is resurrected, he has risen from the dead, they are going to believe in him. They're going to put their faith in him, and then they will have eternal life. It's the only way you're getting off of this earth alive. Without this, we're all done. Nobody lives. Four. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God loves this world so much that he gave his son, his only son, so that whoever believes in him, he's telling you right here, this is the only thing you need to do is believe in him, have faith in him. And you should not perish, but you should have eternal life. And the thing about it is that you should have faith in him. So you can be a great person, do all the works you want, you know, help as many people as you want. If you're not believing in Jesus, you're not getting eternal life. Your works are dead without your faith. There, there's You're not good enough to impress God. None of us are. There's nothing... We can do to impress God. But if we believe in Christ and we put our faith in Christ, then God gave us the get out of jail free card. He's like, I hooked you up, fam. I got you. I got your back, G. So don't sit there and try to do works unless you're going to believe in Jesus Christ. When you come to Jesus Christ, your life is going to change where you're not going to want to do other things, you know, that you shouldn't be doing. So it's not that 
oh man, I'm gonna all right, so I'm a drunk right now, I'm a drug addict, I'm a prostitute, I'm a porn addict, I'm all this stuff, but I'm gonna stop doing this and then I'm gonna seek Jesus Christ. No. Do what you're doing because you you ain't gonna stop doing that crap. Do what you're doing, seek Jesus Christ. Your heart will slowly change, but you have to seek him. You have to keep your head in him. You have to read your Bible, pray. You know, you you have to stay in him. Because the minute you start going back to your worldly things and, oh, man, cool cars and all my big house and all that crap, you're leaving Christ and you're going to start living for the world again. So that's why he tells you, you must remain steadfast in me you must remain focused on me and you know you'll be good you'll be good homie so god so loved the world that he gave his only son and whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him so god didn't send jesus here to condemn us none of us are condemned The whole reason Jesus came here is to save this world through him. That's the only way this world's getting saved is through Jesus Christ. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe is condemned already. So you're already condemned. Anybody who doesn't believe in Christ, hasn't even heard of Christ, you know, you're condemned. But the way you get out of that, believe in Jesus Christ, follow him. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light because their works were evil. So people are doing evil things. They're, you know, they're lying, cheating, adulterers, uh, Lusting, envy, jealousy, hatred, uh, homosexuality, bestiality, porn. That's you. You you don't you don't want to come to the light. You want to stay away from the light. You want to stay away from God because you're doing evil deeds. But if you're doing them evil deeds, you can go to Jesus and. And I mean, go to Jesus, give your life to him. Don't just be like, one, well, yeah, I follow Jesus, bro. I'm going to the church uh, Sunday. I'm going to church Sunday, yo. And you go to church Sunday, and rest of the week, you do whatever the heck you want. Hey, bro, it's Sunday. I'm going to go back to the church. No, that ain't, you ain't following Jesus. You ain't saved. You got to follow him. You got to give him your life. You got to believe wholeheartedly in jesus christ like you believe you got money in your wallet because i know y'all y'all believe in that y'all believe in some pieces of paper in your wallet but this guy thing about it is that you're here temporarily so that paper is temporarily going to help you but this guy is telling you that he's gonna save you forever eternally and this isn't dude you still go Enjoy Halloween. Go, you know, enjoy your Christmas. Have fun with your kids. Have fun with your homies. You know, you don't need to be, don't be getting drunk. Follow Jesus Christ. You know, give thanks to God every day for all the stuff you do. You still have fun. I like hunting. I like fishing. You know, I I like spending time with my family, my kids. My son plays basketball. I coach basketball. That stuff's fun. I love it. So I do all that stuff, but I thank God that I can do it, and I follow Christ. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his work should be exposed. So this is why people don't want to come to the light, because they're doing things that they know they shouldn't be doing. and They don't want to be exposed for it, because the light will expose you. The light makes you do a uh, kind of a reality check on yourself. You know, the light makes you look back at everything you're doing and you're going, crap, man, I am no good. 
But that's okay. Because Jesus Christ came here to fix that for you. You're still going to do some of it. You're still going to screw up. But when you do it, you're going to feel it in your heart. And you're going to know it's wrong now. And that's when you know you're on the right track. But don't go try to clean yourself up and then seek Christ. Seek Christ first. Get a Bible. Start reading it. Uh, those of you who are new to it, get like an NIV or a CSB or an ESV. Don't get a King James if you're not good at reading Old English because it's tough to read. That's why I'm doing this ESV today as opposed to my first episode I read out of King James. I know it's tough for people you know, to understand that. Even me, I have to look words up. But um, so don't don't get cleaned up first. Find Christ first. Let him help you. You don't have to do this stuff alone. Whoever, but whoever, whoever does what is true comes to the light so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. So now we are on verse 22. So after this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he remained there with them and was baptizing. Well, John, John the Baptist, who we read about in episode one, was also baptizing at, I believe this is Anon near Salim or Salem. I'm not sure which way to pronounce that because water there was plentiful. Water was plentiful there, and people were coming and being baptized. For John had not yet been put in prison. I don't know why they said for John had not yet been put in prison. Um, obviously, he hasn't been put in prison if he's there baptizing. So it's interesting. I've been trying to look. That's why I have it highlighted. I've been trying to look into that. It's an interesting, this book, everything that's in this book is there for a reason. Like, uh, Anon, A-E-N-O-N, is a city near uh, Salem. Well, I looked up Anon, and the Greek meaning for that means fountain. Fountain. So, here it says water is plentiful there. So, the city's name in Greek means fountain, and water is plentiful there. So, there's a lot of this stuff in the Bible. Um Plus all the cross references, like over 65,000 cross references. Uh, there is a lot to this. This is something that man on their own could not have come up with. I mean, these some of these things are aligned with stars. And I mean, it, it's crazy. Some of the stuff when you really get down into it. But right now we just want Jesus because that's the only thing that matters, honestly. Now a discussion arose between some of John's disciples and Jew and a Jew over purification. So there some of John the Baptist's disciples and a Jew is having a discussion over purification. So they came over to John the Baptist and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you across the Jordan, they're talking about Jesus, to whom you bore witness. So John's the one who came, got John was sent here from God and to basically give witness that Jesus Christ is coming to whom you bore witness. Look, he is baptizing and everybody's going to him. And John Baptist answers. He's like, a person cannot receive even one thing unless it is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. So, you know, the, he's telling you that these people, you know, Jesus is from heaven. So these people want to receive this gift from Jesus. And he's also telling them that, dude, you guys already witnessed that. I'm telling you, I am not the Christ. I'm not the Christ, bruh. 
I have been sent here before him, you know, because I was born before Jesus in flesh. But that's God, yo. That's God. He's been here. He's been here since the beginning. So y'all, you know, y'all chill. No cap. The one who has the bride is the bridegroom. So basically the husband has the bride. The bridegroom is the husband. So listen to what he's telling you here. He says, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. He must increase and I must decrease. So this is like your homie, you know, is over there chilling. And uh, all of a sudden, your friend who's, you know, getting married, your homie hears you and, you know, he's like, yeah, there's my boy. Yeah. We're about to have a wedding. Woo. That's that's the joy that he has uh, with Jesus Christ. And he is telling you that Jesus Christ must increase and I must decrease. So Jesus Christ is going to build his ministry up and John the Baptist is going to start going away. John don't need to be there anymore. He did what he needed to do. And now John the Baptist is going to start skedaddling, which you'll see what happens to him. He who comes from above is above all. He who is of the earth belongs to the earth. He speaks in an earthly way. So John speaks in an earthly way. Jesus Christ speaks, you know, in a heavenly way. Jesus Christ is all about spirit. Jesus Christ is on a whole different level than John. So John is letting them know, like, dude, I can only do so much. I can let you know he's coming. And that's about it. But he's the one who can let you know about the eternal life and your sins are going to be forgiven, and that he's the truth and, you know, all this. He who comes from heaven is above all. He bears witness to what he has seen and heard, yet no one else receives his testimony. So he bears witness to everything he has seen and heard, and no one receives his testimony. So people aren't, aren't getting it. Whoever receives his testimony sets his seal to this, that God is true. For whom, for he whom God has sent utters the words of God, for he gives the spirit without measure. So for uh, so for uh, he whom God has sent, so for Jesus utters the words of God, and God gives Jesus the spirit, but without measure. Like it ain't like son, I'm only gonna give you a little dash of salt. No, nah, you're getting spirit, brother, son. You're getting full on spirit, baby. You got the drip, the riz, like it's it's the sauce. Full on, no measure. As much as you want. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. So he's telling you, do not, if you do not believe in the Son, the wrath of God remains on you. There, God is doing, God, Jesus with this God is doing everything he can to make this as simple as all you got to do is believe in him. It's that simple, but everybody wants to follow their flesh, the satanic, demonic, worldly crap, the cars, the money, everything that everybody raps about, you know, everything you see in the movie, you notice how Taylor Swift, the weekend, uh, Doja Cat, all these people are making all these demonic videos. Nas X, Little Nas X. You notice how all, all this stuff is becoming normal in the mainstream? That's Satan behind that. 
Satan isn't little a little red guy. Satan is a spirit. It it Satan. It's not one person. It's spirit. You have the darkness, and you all these people have the darkness, and it's easy to gain the darkness. We all have it. You have to find the light. Our flesh is corrupt since birth. We're corrupt. We die. Our flesh rots. There's no way around it. The only thing we can do is follow Jesus Christ. Anyways, I'm going to end it there. Uh, next episode, we'll get into um, Jesus comes to a well uh, to a Sumerian woman, which Sumerians and Jews uh, don't really like each other. They don't get along. Uh, they have two different gods, Jew, Jews, you know, back then followed you know god uh samaria samarians worship something else um so jesus is going to come up to a well he's going to be thirsty asking a lady who is down you know getting water from the well for a drink and they have this whole little talk um it's very interesting um he hits her with some facts from her past that blows her away you know, blows her mind. So she realizes that, whoa, this dude is for real. This man is not capping. Homie is the real deal. This is Jesus Christ. That's the Messiah. So anyways, you guys, um, I speak you know, read this. I was never like this. Um, I was about the world when it came to alcohol, drugs, porn, envy, jealousy, hatred, uh, fighting, um, everything. Trust me, like this isn't me. I would never do anything like this. Um, I gave my life to Christ. Uh, it changed me big time. Uh, I am totally opposite me. I am totally opposite. Brandon, the Brandon that died is completely different than this. This is glory of God helping me out, you know, taking my life. This is, uh, not me. So that's why I am doing this. Um, I really hope some of you guys will listen. Don't, I don't need you to like my video. I don't need you to subscribe. Hopefully y'all listen to this and start doing, you know, what, what we all have to do. And I tell you what, it'll change your life. So anyways, y'all have a great day. Thank you.